What's up, Fisher people? I miss Lake Sakakawea. It's the middle of February. There's ice everywhere. And I'm sitting in Iowa. I'm not sitting. I was out walking at the park. But I have an idea of what might make me feel better. We're going to the grocery store. back. Don't you go diet on me. Whew, it's cold out there. To the kitchen. You still watching? You must be hungry too. Let's go. You may not have ever heard of the term, the Sakakawea Crunch Wrap, but after today, you may never forget it either. So we got all kinds of goodies here. We got, uh, of course, you have to have the corn tortilla. It's not a Sakakawea Crunch Wrap without a corn tortilla. A flour of your choice, that's my choice. You don't have to be gluten-free, but it's nice to have something light and fluffy. This gets a really nice fluffy crisp. Trust me, you'll love it. Slaw, gotta have the slaw. What else do we got in here? Ooh, dill relish, wonderful garnish. That's not for this, that's for later. I didn't invent this, of course, but Frank's Red Hot is a great marinade. I'm gonna go with the uh, the buffalo, garlic buffalo today, actually try something a little different. It's not as hot as you might think it is. Some people will be like, ooh, Frank's hot sauce on fish. When you just marinate it and then you cook it, it just adds a tiny little bit of tang. It's really not that overpowering. Tartar sauce, of course. I had some of this stuff already. I'm gonna get that out right now. Mustard. You can't do this without an avocado, people. You can't. You can't. You can try it. Maybe you don't like avocados. Still try the crunch wrap. I don't know why I'm trying to talk you out of this already. And of course, the thing that makes it the crunch wrap. Crispy potatoes. Crunchy. That's the crunch part. Have you ever seen like a, the a Taco Bell, Taco John's? Which one has the crunch wrap? I don't know, but there's crispy potatoes in it. That's the crunchy part. Or do they crisp up the shell? And I can call it a Sakakawea crunch wrap because I caught these fish on Sakakawea. As you can see, they're pre filleted. But one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't taken out the midlines, which I usually don't do when I'm at the cleaning station. I'd usually do it at home. So we're gonna do that right now. And then we're gonna prepare them for the crunch wrap or the taco, if you want to call it that. Holy crap, it's hot here. Take some stuff off the crowd. There we go. What's the difference between a walrus and a fish that can't swim? I don't know, I suck at making jokes. I get so many clients that ask me to tell them jokes while we're fishing, and I'm like, I don't know jokes. I'm like situationally funny, kind of, sometimes. There's some potatoes in a bowl. I'm gonna leave that for later. Work on the fish now. The world wasn't built for six foot three, people. We're gonna marinate bowl. Got the pranks. Garlic buffalo. See if I can get the packaging off there. I'm gonna put a little in there to start with, just to get the fish something to sit on. And then I'll top it off a little more, shake it, stir it, get it applied evenly. But for now, I gotta tend to the fish cutting. Careful with knives, people. So as you can see down the middle of the filet, where my finger is, there's a little red midline down there and we're gonna pull it out. It's called zippering. And you just make a cut on either side of it, actually both sides, not either, you have to do both, like that, to split that thing. And it just peels right apart like a freaking zipper. 
That goes in the garbage. And now you want to cube the rest of the fish fillet for the frying purposes for the taco crunch wrap. That's going to go on the buffalo sauce to marinade. If you got fairly big fish, I recommend cutting it twice, butterflying it a little bit, so that it's kind of thin. Fish cooks better when it's a little thin. If it's too thick, uh, the inside winds up being kind of soft, it doesn't crisp up well, and it doesn't cook evenly. So think about that. One more zipper on the next filet. Let's see if this one goes, oh, that's beautiful, like a knife through butter. So wonderful when a plan comes together, right? And of course, I got the cheeks. No cutting required. So we got a bowl full of fish, some buffalo sauce on the bottom. Put a little bit on the top to cover it. That should do. Put that lid on there and shake liberally. That looks pretty good. Kind of like ravioli, maybe. Hmm. Now you want something to put the flour in, of course. Flour on the outside of the bag already. That's sketchy. Something where you can coat the fish evenly, piece by piece. I've also seen people put it uh, in a bag and just shake it and roll it. That's probably a better idea than what I'm doing now, honestly. I always put a little bit of salt in the flour because it seems, well, one, add flavor, but it also seems to make the coating stick a little better and not fall off so much when it's in the oil cooking. I'm not sure why that is, but it is, so that's what I do. Need to be very precise, like 10 parts per million or something. I don't know. Is that enough? No. Maybe more? It's not coming out very well. It looks like a lot. It's not that much. Maybe there, maybe more. I'll keep going. Salt, 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 salt. You know, I thought about doing an actual like catch and cook video, but then I would have to actually wait till the next time I catch. And uh, I don't know when I'm gonna go ice fishing again. And I didn't really wanna wait. So uh, I figured you guys would see me catch fish plenty of times. Let's just like fast forward to the cook part. Now at this point, you would normally keep on going, but I am going to clean up, take a shower, put the rest of the stuff in the fridge, do a little dishes and come back and finish the job imminently. Ah, that's better. So now we're gonna batter the fish. Get that out of the fridge. Basically, you just want to take one of these juicy guys, get some batter on all different sides. Nice batter piece of fish. I'll do the rest now. So there's all your battered fish. And now we gotta get the oil started over here. If you've got a fryer, like 375 is about a perfect number. If you don't have a fryer, it's a little tough to figure it out on the stove. Usually about right in the middle, just a little past medium, something like that. Then in the meantime, we get the potatoes roll. Put a little frying oil in the pan for them suckers. And the key, the potatoes, garlic, salt, paprika. In my humble opinion, that's the only opinion that matters right now, because I'm the one making the show. So you're gonna listen and like it. Da da da. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Seasoned potatoes. Now you want to test the oil a little bit with one piece that you don't mind losing in case it's not ready. If it doesn't sizzle a lot right out the gate, it's not good enough. It's not hot enough. And that one didn't. If it doesn't sizzle way longer. God, there's no way I can do a real cooking show. You hearing that now? There's the sizzle. That's the right amount. Yeah, that's gonna be good. So if your test piece is good, that looks nice, golden, brown, and crispy. 
Then you can put your first batch in. Once you get the first batch in, then I usually start the potatoes because fish usually cooks best in batches. You don't want to overload the fryer because then they don't cook as thoroughly. So the fish usually takes a little longer than other stuff. There's a little tail on that one, I'm not sure why. It's not an actual fish tail, clearly. Oh, that's looking good. It sounds good to you. Oh, drop that one a little bit. You should use tongs with this. Tongs are a great idea. It's gonna have an oil fire. Yeah. Get those potatoes going. They get stuck to the bottom of the bowl sometimes. It usually takes about six to eight minutes to cook each batch of fish, I found, if you got it at the right temperature. And typically when you get to the end, the sizzle will kind of temper down and the fish will start to kind of flow to the top if you got a lot of oil, if you're doing a true deep fat fry. This one's still in the middle of it. I got about three minutes in so far. I'll show you the finished product in a second. That first batch is pretty darn close to perfect. Crispy, crunchy. Crispy, crunchy. Golden Krispies. Fish is done. Potatoes getting really close. Now we're gonna fry up these tortilla shells. Oh, there it is. Potatoes are sufficiently crisped. Now you're probably gonna need at least three of these, if not four, because they taste that good. And this is where the order still matters. Item number one, slaw. Sprinkle the base, sprinkle the base, slaw base. Item number two, fish. Selectively pick the crispiest ones and Spread them out across the slaw base. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good one. You should see. Oh, ouch, that's hot. I'm gonna put that on the taco board. Crunch wrap. I gotta call it a crunch wrap. I said it was a crunch wrap. Why do I keep calling it a taco? Da da da, da da da. Gotta have some cooking music. Da da da, da da da. Dee, 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 dee. I don't know what kind of 1920 stuff that is. Slaw, fish, avocado. Get a little avocado on there. California, Mexico, I don't care. So long as it's green and creamy and avocado -y. My fingers are getting dirty again. I won't be able to touch my phone. And now I know you're thinking, potato time? Is it time for potatoes? No, not yet. Because you need something for the potatoes to adhere to. Condiments. Condiment number one, tartar sauce. Apply as liberally as one desires. Condiment number two, spicy brown mustard. Dijon in a pinch. Maybe horseradish. I prefer spicy brown. Da, 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 dee, dee, dee. And I don't know if you call dill relish a condiment. I suppose relish is a condiment. We're gonna call it a condiment. Dill relish. Where's my fork? Just a little bit on the top, like so. Right there. Dill relish. Now we're so close and the potatoes will just stick. You see how it sticks? It sticks to all that stuff. That's the genius there. Now the potatoes don't fall everywhere. They stick to the condiments. There's, there's a method here. It's all a package. It all comes together. 
in a perfect culinary delight. This is the Kalkawea Crunch Wrap. And now, you put something nice on the TV, something to watch, maybe a fishing video. Then you dig in. And if it's not falling apart, you're doing it wrong. Holy crap, that's good. It's like I'm back in Garrison. Mmm. Can you hear the crunch? I don't know if you can hear that. Can you smell the relish? Can you smell the mustard? Can you taste the creaminess of the avocado? Not to mention, walleye is delicious in and of itself. Ooh. So thank you for watching. I hope you consider trying the Sakaka Wea Crunch Wrap. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to catch Lake Sakaka Wea Walleyes. I know a guy. And maybe click the like button on the video. Think about subscribing to the channel. And uh, cheers. This place isn't too much of a disaster. I always wonder if on other cooking shows they actually finish eating the food or if they just throw it away. Like, is it all for show? This is totally not for show. Yeah, it's kind of a disaster. This is going in my belly. What might make me, the, 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 uh, what might make me feel better? I've eaten 785 of these things and I'm still not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.